Hello, welcome to the Dan Zen Museum record, a video record of the Dan Zen Museum. I am Klugmoi, psychedelic historian. Today with us we have Inventor Dan Zen back to talk about yet another mystery. Hi there, Klug. Right, yes, we've got the last mystery that was put into Mustache Mysteries. There's still a couple more that were written out there in the real world, that being the Violet Veil, and what was the other one that was missing? Uh, a Hungarian Hunting Lodge, yes. So those two were never put into a digital form yet, and perhaps one day will. But uh, let's go in to the Dan Zen site now at danzen.com. And we will pan on up until we see the Kerputnik conveyor. Or you could have gone right into Mustache Mysteries or found the mysteries here, but we're doing it based on dates, so we'll come on down, whoopa doopa 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 doopa, past all the ones we've talked about, and arrive at, well, there's the Kulapu Idol. Woohoo! So that's what we're doing next. We did Baron Digbody's castle as well, right here. <laughs> it looks like we did them out of order. Right, yeah, we did do them out of order, didn't we? I'm sorry about that, Klug. Oh, that's okay, Danzen. These things happen. It's a shame, a real shame. Perhaps we'll have to redo the whole si Uh Klug, that's okay. <laughs> All right, so where'd we get to here? Not the Baron Digbody's Castle. Although, tell you what, when we did the Baron Digbody's Castle, I had mentioned that we would take a look at some of the code in behind what the, the castle looked like. So um, why don't we pop on out and check check that out, and then we'll come back and we'll look at the Kulupu Idol. So let's see, 11 out of that. And here is... The Baron Digbody's castle, where we have a room list. So these are the different rooms in the Baron Digbody's castle. And then whether there's a door there or not. So the ones mean there's a door and a zero means there's a not door. So there's four views. Uh, probably this is a starting direction. And here are points, uh, locations of the characters when they stand in there, where they would uh, position themselves. So information about the rooms. Uh, stance list. I'm not sure what this was doing. Um, oh, maybe each. Uh, so this was a general one, and each one then had a variation because uh, there were uh, either different depths or something like that. I'm not sure. And once again, these were created not not by me typing them in. These were created from a, a tool that I made in Director to to create this data for us. Here's a navigation list of which ones will go to, which doors go to which uh, place. And then here's an ownership list of the various statements. So number one has three, I don't know, that's probably a statement. I'm not sure what all these mean, um, but they're going to collect data for us. And maybe if, or maybe these are statements. Is this a statement thing? No, ownership list. So I think these are by, and then statements. Um, yeah, I don't know what those other little ones are going to do. It's been a while since, <clears throat> since I looked at these. There's topic lists. So here's all the topics that will show up. There's a limit of topics. They have to fit in the three panels, the topic panels. And then uh, topic names based on that. So these are yeah, keys, I guess, or something, and then these are the names that will show up in the list, perhaps. Uh, here's an example of off-screen character interaction. We had mentioned that there was a 14 nested loop thing where we're checking to see uh, more than one person in the room, a list of statements pertaining to the topic, below clear statements from the temp that one already knows, so if you already know it, don't do it. Alert, duplicate, and OSCE. Um, Check if you beat the odds. If so, give a sentence with the lower, lowest odds. Uh, that's neat. So if the odds are, uh, say, the odds are, uh, this would be out of 10, um, that you need a 3 or more or higher to get this, or if you need a 5 or higher, or if you need a 9 or higher, then if you uh, roll a 5, or a four or something, then you can't do the three one, but you would be given the five statements. So that way, the more important statements will come after the less important statements, which sort of is a good way to reveal a mystery, I think. Um, one answering, then alert duplicate of one answering. Quite sure what that is. Uh, 
and then there's all this stuff topic already known the answer else the answer and so there we are there's our nested if statement of things and uh, in there as well is well we saw the, the very secret check if someone bad is in the room filter so filters to take out if in this data here in this stuff there's information about don't answer this if somebody's in the room. So in one of these brackets, there might be certain um, person representing a certain person. Oh, uh, this will grow as well. This is just at the beginning, but as it, it, with off-screen character interaction, these brackets are being populated as off-screen characters are learning information from other people. So that keeps on popping up in here. And basically, this, this keeps track of what everybody knows. So we're going to see the Kulupu idol. Here is a sort of a separation of the various statements. So this is a statement list, and here's statement one, statement two, statement three. And so these are all of the statements in the mystery, along with topics. So th those are probably matching topic indicators. So this has a topic of 38, 32, blah, blah, blah. It's a topic of one. And there they are. So if you slow this video down, you would have all of the information about this mystery, and you'd probably be able to read through it and most likely solve the mystery. Which one is this? This is Ocean Gurgles. This is the Kulapu Idol mystery. So <clears throat> there are the statements in it. Uh, almost there. Okay, 181 statements. Oops, I missed my scroll. 181 statements. And here is what that looks like once it's been put into um, a statement list. The last one was what uh, set statement list equal to that. That was a readable version, a readable output uh, that I created. But this one is the actual one where those are, are placed in there for real. So that's, uh, and then the data is provided in there as well. Tuka, tuka, tuka. Neat, huh? So that's information in behind the Kulapu mystery that was written in Director. Let's go to the Kulapu mystery itself. Desktop reveal. Doo, doo, doo. F11. My desktop is a mess because we've had to drop to a lower resolution. These mysteries were actually built at the time of 800 by 600. So when we go into the Kulapu idol, uh, well, this part would be fine. Um, this was kind of neat. Take a look at that. So the the idle shakes, that was uh, brand new stuff in JavaScript, DHTML it was called, to make stuff change with JavaScript. And there it is. I didn't know at the time in HTML, I would have wanted to set the registration point to the middle of this so that when we hit that, it shakes from the middle. But I think you can see it's actually shaking from the left-hand corner. So there's play, there's samples, there's an intro, and there's a download. Let's um, let's just go into the play. Here it is. Now this one was the button will appear once a foreign mystery. While waiting, have fun clicking on the parts of the idle uh, of the title, not in the idle below. So clicking on the parts of the title. So what do we have? Okay, so here's the title. Wrong. So in other words, this thing that I just clicked on is actually in the idle head. So we had the idle, and we then separated this up into the letters of the Kulupu idle. So can you find any? What about this little curl here? Oh, I click on this part. Okay. How about that stem of the two? Do you see how that goes down? Like the curl comes around. I think this prop probably is wrong, but what about that little stem that had to make that? Correct. Okay. Do you get the idea? Wrong. Wrong. I don't know. What about this little curl? Wrong. So most of it is made up there. It's just wrong. This? Wrong. That? Correct. Yes. So this little curl was added after as extra. Anyway, let's play the mystery. So I was saying um, this was set up for 800 by 600, which is why on a 1024 by 768, it looks a little bit small but it's not the end of the world. Uh, if you're on current resolutions, this is just a, <laughs> a little box. Director's sort of awkward in that director does not scale up with the rest of the scaling up of the window. So we're left with it at this size. 
uh, our current technology flash and I'm, I've been coding with Zim, Zim.js. Zim.js has no problem scaling as, as you scale up the window. So, Kulupu Idol. Nothing like a late night skinny dip in one of the boss's pools. Oh, I forgot. In the uh, I, know, I noticed this right at the end of going through the Kulupu Idol that we introduced a little uh, information box down here at the bottom of sort of like what you're thinking or what you could be thinking. So here we go. Kulupu Idol. Hmm, that wasn't there earlier. And then here we are. Oh, it sounds like there's people here. So you're coming to this uh, this place in Hawaii. Uh, expecting for a skinny dip because you're the pool, the pool boy. So we go in. It's the princess lava lava yo in the mudroom. <laughs> so let's meet her. Aloha. You've come for the pool cleaning instructions. You left here earlier. Uh, we're having a party. Uh, why don't you stay? Oh, I hit this lower. Put these away and come on in. My, you're tan. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Princess Lava Lava Yo. So here's the instruction things, and there's <laughs> here's the instructions. Clean this once once per week. So there's the pool in the back. We're in the mud room. Uh, there's mountains and jungle and a lanai and a ceremony room and a bath, a kitchen ramp, garden, hedge. Okay, so let's go on in. It's a mud room. So I did the back. Oh yeah yeah. I did the background. Uh, pictures of the Kulupu idol. Before we talk to anybody, let's just go <laughs> go in and check out the old. This is a kitchen. <laughs> Happened to be roasting a pig. I like these sort of swinging chairs in the kitchen with all the drinks and the beads and the shells and that kind of stuff. Whoa, that's a pretty exciting door. That must be one of those uh, hurricane doors or something. <laughs> so, out here we go, some people sitting or, or not sitting at the bar or near the bar. And down into the garden. Hmm, that looks nice. Mountains, huh? And there's Dan Hu himself. And Gaylord, no, is that Gaylord Leperskin? I can't remember. Not him. It might not be in with the lounge by the pool. Nice. The garden flowers. Okay, let's go back on up and in. And, uh, Where'd we get to meet these guys? That's Gaylord Leopard Skin, no doubt about it. Uh, yeah, swinging. I'm Gaylord. <laughs> Gaylord Leopard Skin. <laughs> Look at his mouth move. Perhaps later you'll shed your clothing and don a lemming or salamander with me. So he tends to wear animals. Party on. <laughs> Party on. <laughs> Right. Uh, oh, this is a warning. This is in the land of the politically incorrect. We're all we're all sort of worried of uh, cultural appropriation and making fun of languages and all this kind of stuff, which has been the basis of humor and certainly of these role playing characters. You know, you just like role playing and playing characters from around the world. Hopefully, they role play us just as much. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> this is kind of extreme. Howdy, thousand partners. I am Cowboy Frank Beans. So, um, yeah, my apologies. This could be a little bit much at time for the very reason of placing my beans into the auction uh, for the Kulupu Idol. Oh, okay. So there's an auction. This is a party for the auction for the Kulupu Idol. Interesting. And this is Allo am Egastartan. The weather is hot enough. We surely will melt like. The butter in my bunny skillet pan. <laughs> I guess tart pan is, uh, uh, this was a mystery, just chock full, um, spoiler, just chock full with double identities. Just like every single person in this mystery is a double identity. There's a Kulupu idol. Oh my gosh, I almost have to refresh myself on <laughs> how this mystery went. But we'll get there perhaps. You might be in for a little bit of a long haul here. So he's he's actually um, what do you know about the pool? Ah, no, he's French in theory. No, he's not French. That's right. He's he's supposed to be um, uh, Scottish, but he's actually French. So you've got this mix of Scottish and French, which actually worked out pretty darn well. Never really thought about it before, but in terms of a mix of accents, they're actually quite similar. 
Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, Frank Beans is supposed to be a cowboy, but he's obviously um, somebody from India. And Gaylord Leopard Skin, <laughs> who the heck knows? What do you know about the pool? Perhaps we shouldn't. Wahoo! What a doozy of a question. <laughs> That's all the answers. That means he doesn't know or he's not going to tell me. Let's go meet some of these other people. Uh, well, okay. Aloha. I am Hule. Your hula host, swish, swish. Now note that the character's heads um, turn towards the person talking. It is very nice for the princess to make available her resort so we can conduct our private auction for the Kula Poo Idol. Sway, sway. I understand you are a member of the groundskeeping ensemble. You do a wonderful job and you are welcome to join us. At any time, you can click through those two if it becomes too onerous to read. And here is our host, the Lava Lava Yo. Oh, we met her already. Uh, right, we met her at the door. What do you know about Gaylord Leopard Skin? Not too much. Aloha, I'm Tuk Tit Tai Tung, the bartender. Mm. I make an ocean gurgle. It's a shot of gin, a dose of Sprite, a slosh of blueberry blue Kool-Aid, and a pinch of Pop Rocks. We actually made that for our mysteries. We played each of these mysteries twice. I don't know what the others think, but what do you know about Haggis Tartan? I don't know much about Haggis Tartan. What do you know about Gaylord Leopard? Oh, I already asked her. <laughs> I can't just keep on asking everybody about Gaylord Leopards again. What's going on? Who is this guy, Gaylord Leopards again? What do you know about? What do you know about the pool? Thanks for taking the pool job. I see uh, something, something, something. All right. So who are these guys? So now that we've been asking questions, Haggis Tartan has moved around. Who's Koo? Koo! I've seen you around. Do you remember me? Uh, you thanked me because you get a lot of jobs <laughs> removing loose feathers, or loose feathers, from people's pools. Right, so Ku is a member. I'm Ku. She's a member of, uh, maybe she'll tell you, please to flock with you. No, she doesn't. She's a member of a, a cult of the minor bird. Ah, right. Cult of the giant minor bird, that is. So there's cult of the giant minor bird. Well, I'm Tilly Tierra. I'm Terry T Tierra. Tilly Tierra. The great archaeologist explorer. Of course, she isn't as well. She's the archaeologist neighbor who happened to get an invitation to Hawaii. Well, it was um, responsible for a mail and saw that there was, you know, something that looked exciting. She opened it, and there were free tickets to Hawaii, or free ticket to Hawaii to attend this auction. And Tilly Tierra was away in South Africa or something like that for a long time. So she, went, she just said, okay, I'll pretend to be Tilly Tierra, and I'll come to this thing. So that's who she is. She's actually Mabel a Abel Skewers, Skewers or something. Uh, but anyway, she is over the top. She pretends she's an archaeologist, uh, et cetera. And we've met Haggis Tartan already. <clears throat> Down we go. Now, as we go, I forgot to show you this in the Kulu, or in the Baron Digbody's castle. You also have a list of the guests, Frank Beans, Tuk Tuk Tai Tung, that you can see, and any guests we haven't met are a pineapple head. The uh, Baron Digbody's castle, I think, I think we're a bunch of gravestones. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, each person you met would be a head on a gravestone or something like that, and then any that you hadn't met uh, weren't. So you've got that. You have access to the house as well, so you can see your way around. And you can try and solve, but it's probably saying we should meet everybody before we solve. And so I'm sorry that we didn't get to go into that for the Baron Digbody's castle. It was quite exciting. You um, then get to sort of pair up your clues. You get to choose two clues that go together, and then another two clues that go together, and then another two clues to go together. And those three pairings, if you get them right, uh, you solve the mystery. So let's meet these guys anyway. Who's this? Uh, Poe, Bonsai Dude. You look like you are in most bonus physical shape. How are you mentally? Oh, right. He's a psychiatrist. I'm Robert Rimmer. And I've just been deinstitutionalized. Oops, I should say. I am a visiting shrink from sunny California. Let me know if you need some systematic hypertension release or a cognitive account of your gender schema. 
<laughs> oh, I think it was, I was into the whole gender movement quite early, wasn't I? Uh, this is in the 90s. There are uh, so many fascinating voices of Don Who. It is often irresistibly romantic, often gaily laughing, often a timber of wisdom. But most of all, it is warm like the scented air of Hawaii. <laughs> yuck, <laughs> yuck. <laughs> Dan Hu is pleased to let you breathe his hair. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, that's Dan Hu. He's filled with himself and always talks in third person. Is that what it's called? Okay, let's see the beginning of that. Let's just hit the pardon. Oh, did the pardon work? It didn't work. Swimming pool. Swimming. Dan Hu is a man of mystery. Come on, tell us uh, a cognitive neo association analysis of this auction that's what he was asking i don't know about that so let's try that part and again these buttons seem to be gandhi um yeah i've uh, lost them maybe if i move rooms no uh that's too bad so we've got a glitch glitch in the system due to something or another um dan who tell us about swimming pool ah the belly of dan who rising above the sur <laughs> surface certainly something to see uh oops i double click there we met frank beans before so i think we've met everybody and now a little bit about the mystery so uh, where to start the mystery of the kulapu idol so the kulapu idols being is being sold or sorry being auctioned now the thing is, uh, there are five people here who already have the Kulupu idol. <laughs> so um, imagine having a booklet saying, you are the owner of the Kulupu idol, and for some reason, there is an auction for the Kulupu idol. You've been invited to an auction for, to, to the Kulupu idol. So what's happened is five people have been sold the Kulupu idol, and think they have it. So she thinks she has the Kulupu idol and she wants it because, uh, oh, and she's asking about fakes. Can you tell me about fakes? So already part of her topic is fakes. She probably won't answer anything about it. Ku, are you going to join us? Hmm, that's, she's just, <laughs> maybe that's what she always says. Come on, join the cult of the giant minor bird, no matter what. Uh, no, she does answer other things. And so five of the Kulupu idols are out there. Where is the where are the people? These guys have one, but this guy really doesn't know much. He's he's investigating some sort of insurance fraud or something like that. Oh, he's investigating insurance fraud on Dan He, who had something stolen. Oh, had had the oh that's right. I think he had may have had the the Kulupu idol stolen. Um and has claimed that it's worth a lot of money. So that's why Dan Hu is here, of course, because wait a minute, there's an, an idol, an auction for my idol. So this guy's an investigator, but as he arrived, he needed to know how to get in to this party. He didn't have any way in. So he saw somebody walking towards, in, in the dark path on the way up, somebody walking towards it, who was uh, holding holding a, a big wooden, or not too big, but, you know, like a wooden um, idol head, basically. Club, I think he called it. A wooden club, that's right. A blunt, a round blunt club. <laughs> so he snatched the club and knocked the guy over the head and put on his clothes. So that's why he, his clothes don't fit him. He uh, is now taking on, and, he, and he, he caught this invitation. So he has an invitation as well, so he knows a little bit about it. He's Frank Beans. And uh, that's who he is. So he's investigating. Gaylord Leopard Skin is also uh, investigating, but from afar. I think it was a lover, uh, a lover's spat or something like that. And uh, invited to. Oh no, was killed maybe over it. I think. Uh, so he's trying to find out what's going on. Tilly Tierra is the the neighbor of Tilly Tierra, who's an archaeologist who. Uh, also received the, the Kulupu idol or bought the Kulupu idol at some point. And so it begs the question, who who did they all get it um, from? Tell me about birds. I don't know about that. Uh, Haggis Tartan is there. He's investigating something as well. Who have we got in the kitchen? Tuk Tai Tung. Tuk Tik 
<laughs> whatever his name is, Tuck Tit Tai Tung, is um, actually the, the the butler. And here, have another of my ocean gurgles. They taste nice, don't they? He has a brother. The brother was the ukuleleist for Dan He. The, the ukuleleist was found dead, hit over with shards of, I can't remember, like a ukulele or something. Um, she, this this one, is a policewoman, and lava lava yo, lava lava yo, told me that we uh, maybe we may all swim if we want. Maybe she'll join us later. She's not lava lava yo. That's lava lava yo. What do we know about nakedness? I don't know. Sway sway. What about birds? The cult of the giant mina bird uh, build huge nests everywhere. They scare the public. Um, right. Uh, hey, uh, who? Uh, I don't know about that one either. I don't know actually much in this one. I'll see what I can find out. What about ocean gurgle? Ah, oh, we don't care about ocean gurgles, really. How about cults? Glad you asked, but I don't know. Um, what about, what would she know about Lava Lava Yo? Let's swim in the pool, I'll join you later. That she is Lava Lava Yo, I think. Sometimes it helps to ask questions about yourself, like uh, because usually they at least know something about that. Foreigners come and learn natives with promises of great wealth, yet look around. Why do we want wealth in this paradise? Unfortunate people don't see it this way. So he's a bit of a, he's sort of grumpy about it. So what do I know about the auction? I don't know anything about the auction. I'm the pool person. What do you know about money? If I knew, I could tell her. So she's investigating the, um, <laughs> I know something about speech problems, <laughs> aside from Gaylord Leopard Skin. Uh, She's investigating the murder of her, uh, his brother. Um, so we've got a murder. We have a cult of a minor bird. All of these people, uh, many of them have Kulapu idols. And then there is a map uh, that you'll find out. Um, there's a map to a treasure that is around and people are looking for that and um dan zen is washed up so if you if you talk to or not dan zen dan who i actually played dan who as a sort of alternate persona had a haircut like this maybe wasn't quite as round poo could you postulate on a cognitive new association analyst of this bungalow um, i don't know about much about the bungalow Let's have the pop on up here. So that's what the mystery is like. You're you're just uh, moving around trying to figure out what the heck is going on with all these things. I'm not sure who knows the the most um, speech problems. Some people say I have a lips and a, 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 a stutter, but who but, but who are they to say? Uh, right. Yeah. So that he does, but um, that's all part of life. Rich pageant, Tilly Tierra told me that she's explored the vast reaches of Tahiti, wandered the wild Amazon plains and mountains, and uncharted uncharted the charted, charted the uncharted in her quest to bring peace to the savage and the breedless. Wow. So uh, they just got that information. Can we use these things yet? No, we can't. Um, that's not on my map. So the map. Any idea? Oh, there's also the a large black ruby. So the large black ruby is the cult of the minor bird is right in, or maybe the large black ruby is worth a lot of money. Um, it was supposed to be an egg of the cult of the minor bird as well. So that's the connection. The large black ruby or the the minor bird. The big, huge minor bird was supposed to lay, that's right, not lay, I think this was lay black, or maybe, maybe it was the the, um, the poo. <laughs> We've got, got some poo going on here. Maybe it was uh, the poo of the, the, the giant black minor bird um, were these black rubies. So black rubies are fabled. They're, there's a map that's supposed to lead you to the, the black minor bird place so ku needed the uh needed the idol head because that was supposed to be related can you guess how the idol head let's just go see the idol uh can we see it up here i think there it is the idol itself it is a real thing the oh please don't go you've not solved it goes out 
There it is there. You can't quite tell from this. It's not really the idle head. The idle head was earlier. Remember that little round thing? Turns out that the idle head has, uh, have you got it? Spoiler, 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 spoiler. The kulapu means, as you will find, it means beauty mark in Hawaiian. So beauty mark, this, this idol has a beauty mark, and that beauty mark is a black ruby. So some people wanted, some people found out about that and wanted the idol head because of that black ruby, and that's it. But the idol head is more than that. The idol head is, has eyes and a brow and a nose and a mouth, and they're all sort of rather abstract lumps or mounds with the, so they're not very detailed at all. Do you get it? Mountains. Oh, there was, there was the, uh, the answer right there. Isn't that interesting? So he asked about mountains. Mountains is it. The idol head's face is a mountainous map. Like it, it, it shows the mountains, uh, mount, mountain ranges. With the uh, Kulapu, with the beauty mark at the location of the giant minor bird or the, the black, where the giant minor bird is supposed to be, and the black rubies. So Dan Hu knew about this, and he is, he's a bit washed up, as, as you'll find. Uh, he is looking for rubies so that he can keep in the money. And it's also part of the heritage of, uh, what's her name here? Princess Lava Lava Yo is, uh, there's a giant sea turtle that's involved who was um, a pet of the, I can't remember which way I'm going, a pet of Lava Lava Yo was the one who somehow managed to swim off with the idle head, ate it or something like that. And then Dan He found the, uh, found the sea turtle. So that's how he became in possession of the idle head. But people didn't really know that. So he, he found it, heard it, knew about the legend of it and uh, has been uh, mining. Maybe the people in that Indian fellow, that's right. I think there's a lot of people from India who are, have been ported over and are missing and was the mining. So perhaps uh, that's what the um, uh, Frank Beans was after is uh, trying to find out what the heck is going on with um, the Indian people who are, or people from India who are disappearing in the mines here in Hawaii. Uh, looking for these black rubies. Ku, of course, wanted the map for, she wanted the map for um, locating her following. And this guy uh, down here, if he's still here, I haven't been asking too many questions, probably is. He is Ku's brother, or long lost brother, who was washed up in shore and taken into a crazy house. So he's got all sorts of stories about minor birds or whatever. Let's see if we can find out any birds. You know anything about birds? Pooh. I was found washed up on the San Fran shore in a giant bird's nest. So uh, what's cooking with the tourists? Tuck, tick, tie, tongue. Foreigners all, all ruddy, muddy now. Um, yeah, I think, come to think of it, he, he's the guy who's investigating Dan Hu for the diamond. And uh, the other one was the tourist. So um, he has escaped from the insane asylum and taken on the persona of... of uh, whoever he is, what was his name again? Robert Rimmer, who is a doctor who wrote uh, Proposition, some proposition, Proposition 15, 21, 31, 18, I can't remember which one it was, uh, for free love. It was a San Francisco sort of free love movement. I think it was San Francisco based where they were trying to pass laws on uh, free love and free you know, open marriages and all this kind of stuff at the time. And Robert Rimmer wrote a book on that and a couple others along those lines. I was right into psychedelia and all that kind of stuff. So all this, all this kind of intrigued me. Um, and yeah, this was written during a very psychedelic time, all sorts of parties and uh, stuff like that going on. So it was very fun to play. And of course, I was born in Hawaii. So it was fun to introduce uh, the types of characters and the types of happenings that might go on in Hawaii. Oh yes, this stuff is happening all the time in Hawaii. So there we have uh, various people's reasons for wanting the Kulapu idol, but the question still remains, 
why were there all these copies? Are the copies accurate? Uh, what happened to the dead um, ukuleles, the ukuleles of Dan Hu, uh, and so forth. So the answers to that is that the ukuleles found out about the Kulupu idol and thought that he would get some, some money, thought he would get some money by selling the Kulupu idol to people, except selling fakes, basically, and as well to get back at Dan Hu, who didn't treat him very well uh, during the time. Uh, so he's the one that sold them, and a list. He was his, his dead body was found by the police, or Princess Lava Lava Yo, uh, part of the Oahu police outfit, uh, along with a list of names. And so she found the list and decided, hey, if we invite this list of names to an auction for the Kulupu idol, they're bound to come to find out is this uh, which idol head is real. Now, wait a minute. I have the idol head. How can there be an auction for it? So all these people have come to the Hawaiian Islands. She's now, she doesn't even have an idol head, so there's a, a, an auction coming up, and, and yet there are <laughs> no, she doesn't have the idol head to even auction, but she, uh, these others think that she might. And then we're just seeing, she's stirring up the pot. We're just seeing what happens as all these people get together. <clears throat> so there's still a question as to who killed uh, Ping Tong, the, um, the ukuleleist. And the answer, I think, if I remember correctly, is actually Dan He himself. He didn't want um, word to get out uh, about the idol head. He was mad that the thing was stolen and he kabonged him with the ukulele, forgetting that it was some sort of silver encrusted ukulele or something like that. So it was an accidental murder and off he went um, disrot. There may have been some other things as well involved in the mystery. There's a few red herrings going on uh, historically with things like the giant sea turtle that went, but it's still all connected. And so that was the Kulapu Idol Mystery. Interesting, huh? And if we could hit that button, I'm sorry about the button. Let me just do a refresh on this. I think I'm doing a refresh. Control R. Refresh. Run an old browser. Let's just uh, pop on in quickly. There's the dark path. Do, do, do. So kind of starting, why don't you stay? Please put this way. Come on in, my your tanned. Off we go. Uh, the colors would allow you to change the, the colors of the, the place as well to uh, different shades if you so desired. So green and orange, sort of a blue shade. Can't remember which one we played on. It sometimes takes a little while to get used to the color as well. But isn't that nice? That's the idol. What else? Uh, you can't solve it. Yes, we saw how the guests are. There's a restart, which we could have done, I suppose. Pardons and memories and that kind of stuff. Help. Where does help go? There we go. That is the Kulupu idol mystery. Did we did we finish it off? So uh, the crux of that mystery really is the idol head itself. And when we actually played the game or played the mystery outside in the real world, there was an idol head around. I, I still have it, the Kulupu idol with a beauty mark. I haven't seen it in a darn while. Um, I would then wear it out to various places as a, um, a medallion. <laughs> it's fun having this big idol head as a medallion. The crux of the mystery was that that Kulupu idol wasn't indeed a map to uh, the fabled giant mina bird and its mine, the, the shape of the face. And I kind of like that idea. Um, I also like the fact that there were five people involved who all thought they had the idol. Now, coming into the mystery, they were put in that place. They they thought, uh, according to their, their booklet, you've got the Kulupu idol. Why is there an auction? And so you're going to find out, um, and that was impetus. And other, uh, so it allowed multiple people, at least five people, to be in on the real mystery, to sort of like all 
all be heavily involved in the mystery. And then there were the people that lived here and who were trying to solve things. A lot of double identities. Each person who's here, um, pretty well, each person who's here is some sort of double identity. As well as, as, as the princess, Lava Lava Yo. Oh no, she's the, the hostess. But the, the other one, Hula Girl Hule, the people who come, they don't know that she's a policewoman. They think she's just, you know, hanging out there. So there's uh, all sorts of fun disguises and things to learn about. It was a lot of fun to play that mystery. And thanks, Klug, for letting me share that here in the Dance and Record. It's been wonderful to tell people these mysteries. Uh, we hope maybe one day to bring them back in a, a sort of a more current form. And we'll try again. Perhaps we won't make it so difficult to get in and, and, and solve. Uh, because mystery is good, but that's what interactive is. People hopefully would like that. It does take a certain patience. Uh, my daughter has played all these and, and loved them and has that type of patience to get in and actually try and figure out these mysteries. And so that was reward in itself just to have her play these things and actually get really involved and, and try and figure it out and actually uh, figure it out. It's fun when you solve as well. Oh, but I'm rambling on. Let's leave it at that. And thanks for hanging out here at the Dan Zen Record. Indeed. Yes, thank you, Dan Zen, for all of your creations and for talking about them to the people here at the Dan Zen Museum Record. I am Klug Moi, psychedelic historian, and it was a delight to meet you and know you during your psychedelic phase itself. Bloop, bloop.